four, three, two, one. Position, lift off. And then you saw we had a successful liftoff of the Falcon 9. Uh, if you were watching closely, you also saw the strong back retract just during uh, that initial part. Uh, we're currently throttling down the main engines in order to minimize some of the pressure as we move through supersonic. And coming up next, uh, max Q, which is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure where the rocket's pushing hardest against the vehicle. The vehicle is supersonic. And then we just had a, a call out the vehicle's supersonic. Coming up to maximum Q, which Max is the Q maximum stress pressures on the mechanical part of this chemistry. Matthew, the chemistry is amazing, and it really is still, with liquid oxygen, the chemistry of another time and place in space engineering. That's right. I mean, as you said earlier, you know, there's nothing routine about launching a rocket into space, um, despite the fact we've been doing this for decades now. And you know, it's uh, still quite incredible to, to watch that thing go up. Um, you know, huge amount of thrust uh, that it's pushing. And it's, it's hard to believe that the next generation, the Falcon Heavy rocket, will have something like five times uh, the amount of thrust when it launches. So, yeah, it's an incredible sight. Um, it is absolutely incredible, I and mean, it, just, it just brings you back to kind of the dreams that, you, that we all had as mm. a kid. What's an AI robot crew member in yeah. space look like? Well, that's right, yeah. I mean, uh, this is really bringing uh, what was sci-fi into reality. So it's called Simon, um, and it's essentially uh, a floating sphere. Um, they say around the size of a medicine ball, so I guess a, a very big soccer ball. Um, and it is genuinely intended to be a, a new member of the crew. It's got uh, IBM-powered AI, artificial intelligence, from the Watson program, uh, which will give it um, a kind of voice um, user interface. Uh, and it's going to really kind of help, um, I think, in terms of you know, the kind of longer-term manned space flight into deeper space, um, how robotic and computers can actually help take away some of the kind of more mundane tasks that astronauts might have to do uh, so they can focus on the more important things. Right, so this is, he actually does stop. I mean, Simon, I don't know if it's gender yeah. neutral or not, right? But yeah. I, from what we yeah. understand is as you were describing them, they kind of float around the station and then zooms in on astronauts if you call its name. That's right. Does yeah. it do menial tasks or is it also for a company? Um, I, you know, I, I think it's for a mixture of things. I think it's, you know, partly to take away some of those kind of menial tasks that uh, the national would do, but also, you know, to kind of provide some kind of interaction and stimulation, I think, with, with, with them. Yeah, so they're going to have this uh, thing floating around um, genuinely a bit like a, um, you know, a sci-fi. And I think apparently they've loaded it up with uh, personality traits from some um, film uh, robots like R2-D2, for example. So it is going to have a bit of a personality what, to it. What, not Tom Keen? Who would not want a Tom Keen person? <laughs> personality in I, space. I think it was probably too expensive for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> too, too much into charts and some of the algorithms that we need to look at. What comes after this? Does this help with fundraising at SpaceX? <clears throat> How is that? Who's putting money into this? Well, I mean, they, they have a multi-billion dollar um, contract with uh, NASA for the um, ISS um, cargo missions. So, you know, that there's a, there's a very, you know, solid financial um, contract there for them. I think, you know, really uh, that the next big stepping stone for uh, SpaceX and um, some of their competition is to demonstrate to NASA that they can deliver manned uh, space vehicles, um, mm. you know, to support kind of future missions of NASA. So that's what all the kind of the, um, the Falcon Heavy, uh, this Dragon crew um, cargo vessel, that's, that's the kind of next steps, I think, for SpaceX to kind of really cement their future with the U.S. administration. We're looking at images here of the SpaceX launch and the second stage uh, breakout, and we're going to a number of minutes out, uh, uh, 11 minutes out, where the solar arrays will deploy, and then later on, two hours out, uh, some of the control bay doors will open. Francine, what's interesting about this, by chance last night, 
I was looking at an ancient movie from 1967, which was Mr. Connery back when he was cut and chiseled doing the James Bond act. And it was only lived twice. And of course, they open it with the famed Gemini mission, uh, which is, you know, taken up by Spectre. Matthew, it is, it is extraordinary to look at these images and how we take them for granted versus the sweat that we had up through the Apollo missions. Yeah, that, 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 I think that's right. But, you know, we also have to remember this is uh, quite a recent phenomenon. You know, I mean, I, I remember, you know, the, um, uh, the space shuttle program and then that, that closed down and really space travel was very quiet. So it's interesting under the, you know, the new U.S. administration that really, you know, space exploration uh, is becoming a, a big deal again. So, you know, it's an exciting point in the, the kind of evolution of, um, you know, the, the human race, really. You know, this kind of really, we are at the kind of frontier where um, space travel is going to become something a bit more kind of normal.